Welcome to Crossroads Kids Online Edition. Now, I'm not going to lead a song of worship for you today, but remember, you can go to the Crossroads Kids YouTube channel for preschool songs and elementary songs that you can worship with today or any day. Now, I had some cool items I was going to give everybody today, some magnets, some sunglasses, but obviously I can't. So, next time. But before I get started, I wanted to remind you and your parents, so make sure your parents are watching right now, about a couple of things. The first one is camp. It's time to start signing up for camp, both Hidden Haven and our new Connect Camps. We all know about Hidden Haven. We've seen pictures from previous years, but Connect Camps is something brand new, and it will be a camp we do right here at Crossroads. Now, I sent a video to your parents all about Connect Camps and all about Hidden Haven and how to sign up, but here's a video that shows you how much fun Connect Camps will be in July. Imagine during the summer of 2020, giving your kids a week they'll never forget. A remarkable day camp experience in your own community. With large group worship and small group Bible study and 19 different skills to choose from, Connect Camps brings your K-8 grader non-stop fun all day long for an entire week. Your kids will come home each day excited to share what they experienced, creating memories for your whole family. Visit ConnectCamps.com to find a location near you. questions about it, ask Rance and ask Calvin and ask Carden. They've done camp before and they know how great it is. The next thing is for fourth and fifth graders only. As of right now, we're planning on having fourth and fifth street next Sunday at 4 p.m. So be sure to be here and be ready to have fun and study the Bible together. The last thing is to remember to practice the know you song because we still will be leading it on March 29th on Family Worship Sunday and that link is probably is going to be in the comments on this video and will be on our YouTube channel. So let's get started with a small word of prayer. Dear God, we ask that you be with us to help us to be still as we watch this video help and as we open our Bibles to see what you want to teach us today. Lord, we are so thankful that we do get to come together, even if it's on our computers, even if it's online, we still get to come to you and worship you no matter where you are or where we are, because you are a great, great God. It's in the wonderful name of Jesus we pray. Amen. The last time we were together, we heard how God used a man named John to help people get ready to meet Jesus. And he was a little strange, but do you remember what his message was about? Hmm, yeah, John told them to repent, and then he baptized people with water. Now, one day, this is where our story really starts, Jesus came to John to be baptized, and, and so let's open our Bibles to Matthew chapter 3, verse 14. I'm going to put it on the screen for you guys so you can follow along in case you don't have your Bible, but John was shocked that Jesus came to him. And John said, I need to be baptized by you. And do you come to me? But Jesus insisted that John baptize him, even though Jesus never sinned, which meant that he didn't need to repent or he didn't need to be baptized. And, but he did it anyways. And as John baptized Jesus in verses 16 and 17, the Bible says Jesus came up from the water and at that moment, the heavens opened, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and landing on him. The voice of God said, This is my son, whom I love. With him I am well pleased. Wow. Everyone who was gathered in that place heard God's voice and saw that the Holy Spirit came down on Jesus. 
Then the Holy Spirit led Jesus into the wilderness. And for 40 days, 40 nights, Jesus fasted. And that means Jesus didn't eat anything, just drank water. And at the end of the 40 days, he was hungry. But he didn't get to eat anything because Satan came to tempt him. Satan. Who is Satan? Well, he's the enemy of God. And before the creation of the world, there's an angel named Lucifer who wanted to be as powerful as God. So God threw him out of heaven. And ever since, this enemy, Satan, has been working to steal, kill, and destroy. That comes from John chapter 10, verse 10. He's trying to steal and kill and destroy us, God's creation and God's people. But we don't need to fear because as we've talked about so many times this year, our God is undefeated. And let's see how that works off, works in today's story. Let's turn to Matthew chapter 4 and let's follow along. The enemy said, If you are the Son of God, tell these stones to become bread. You see, Satan tempted Jesus to use his power to meet his needs, his physical needs, instead of trusting God the Father to provide for him. But the Holy Spirit gave Jesus power to obey the Father. In verse 4, Jesus replied, It is written, Man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. And Jesus responded with a Bible verse from the Old Testament. And boys and girls, that's why we have you memorize those verses from the New and the Old Testament. And in boxing, a bell rings after each round ends. Yeah, just like that. Well, round one goes to Jesus. The enemy tried again. He took Jesus to the top of the temple in Jerusalem and dared Jesus to jump off the temple, telling him that the angels would catch him, of course. Satan even quoted a passage from the Psalms, which he knew scripture too. Here's what, it, here's what Satan said. He will command his angels concerning you, and they will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. Did you catch that? Satan tried to use scripture to trick Jesus into sinning. Jesus quoted scripture back. Jesus said, it's also written, do not put the Lord your God to the test. Jesus, he didn't need to prove to himself or to Satan or anyone else. Round two goes to Jesus. This deceiver, Satan, tried a third time to get Jesus to sin. He brought Jesus up on a high mountain and told him to look at all the land and all the kingdoms. And here's what it says in verse 9. Satan said, all this I will give to you if you bow down and worship me. But Jesus refused. The whole world already belonged to God. He didn't need to bow down and worship him, Satan. Jesus said, here, this is, this is great, boys and girls. He said, away from me, Satan, for it is written, worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Round three goes to Jesus again. After that, the enemy left. The angels came to take care of Jesus. Jesus knew he was responsible for his life, his gifts, and other resources, making sure he used them to please God. So he relied on the power of God's spirit to resist all the temptation the devil threw at him. Satan tempts us too. Because he wants us, he wants to destroy us and our relationship with God, but we too can resist the devil just like Jesus did. How can we do this? And I know there may be a lot of temptations. It's spring break. There may be a lot of temptations to do things that your parents don't want you to do. So, so what do you do? We trust the Holy Spirit to lead us and give us power. When we trust and obey Jesus, God sends us the Holy Spirit to live in us and guide us. The Bible says God is faithful. We've been talking a lot about that lately. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, 
He will also provide a way out so you can endure it. And that's in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. You see, boys and girls, moms and dads, God always provides a way out of that temptation. But you and I, we're responsible for choosing to take that way out. With the Holy Spirit inside us, we all have the power we need to keep from sinning. You see, Jesus was just like us. He was tempted to sin. But the Holy Spirit gave him power over that temptation in his wilderness. Jesus loves us. And he knows how hard it can be to face that temptation. The Bible says we do not have a high priest who is unable to empathize with our weakness. But we have one who has been tempted in every way, just like we are. Yet, he did not sin. So let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. Hebrews chapter 4 verses 15 and 16. Right now, as this video ends, I want you and your family to spend some time talking with God. And as you spend time with Him, ask God to help you see a way out when you are tempted. And as you do, God will provide that way. Boys and girls, moms and dads, I look forward to seeing you face to face very soon.